The Bitcoin bullish run is over. Cryptocurrencies that have gone on massive runs up to 230% are now retreating. The guys that got in to the FOMO over the last week or two are now really feeling the hurt. So does this mean it's time to be buying the dip or is there further pain to come? Let's take a look at that, update the charts for Bitcoin, ETH and some of the other major cryptocurrencies that we've been trading here and of course figure out what the hell is going on. So I've got a big, excellent, and if, I'm, if I don't mind saying myself, video for you guys because we're going to look at each of the bars individually, especially on the 4-hour chart, to identify what is going on so that we can see that in the, in advance for the trades. So the first thing we want to do is update the Bitcoin chart to give us an idea about what's going on in the macro space, then get into the nitty-gritty of the smaller term timeframes for the cryptocurrencies. So this is the part that helps out the most. Of course, quick shout out, video sponsors, Bybit, and if you're a US resident, US citizen, then you could use something like BitGet. So you can see they're very similar sort of layouts if you're looking to trade cryptocurrencies. Definitely have a plan, use stops. I will always say that. And if you're looking for something to, as a starting point, check out yesterday's video. We're looking at a trading plan, very, very simple using the GAN swing indicator. You can see here this yellow line. And I've left links to all this stuff in the video description if you wanna get started on those things. So there's up to $4,000 of sign up bonuses here and 8,000 on BitGet for the US guys over there. So back to Bitcoin, the likes, the subscribes, all that sort of thing, if you find some value from it. The bullish zone, broken down right here from 21,700. That was our biggest key level that we've been following. Reason for that, is it is what called the market from the first bounce out. Now this is something that I use on every single bounce out of the market. We could use it from the tops down as well. This is something that Wyckoff used, very similar style, just looking for where the smart money is stopping the market and what the bulls, bears, we'll call it the whales, are trying to overcome. They're trying to break through these particular price points and if you see the market fall back under them, then it's not a good sign in the short term. So uh, right now we're falling underneath that. The only thing I can see helping us out from this point to break back above, to get back into that bullish zone, of course, is a very quick move above 21,700. So this has called the market for the last five weeks. Key level that we've been following to let us know whether we're flipping bearish or bullish because that is gonna then help us out for our trading. And of course, just clear the noise of what's going on in the news. There's always something getting told to us. There's always news going on. But if we stick to the chart, the charts are the facts. They don't lie to us like the news, like the neighbors, like influencers. The chart is the chart. It's who is buying and who is selling. This was the key level back underneath it. I was hoping for a support on around 21.7. It's not the end of the world because we still have a larger 50% level. The larger time frame, 50% level comes out at 20,900. So basically $21,000. So it's not the end of the world just yet. We have eight hours to go. If we can get a little push down, clear out some of these stops, so people would have their stops in the market underneath some of these bars here, then Bitcoin to close back above, we still hang on with a thread of hope. So the next step would then to be close above and then test the next level to get onto this target. All right, so Bitcoin is basically, the bull run is over unless that can happen because if we start to go back under these levels, then it's far more likely, we're just looking at probabilities that the market is going to churn at these levels and then it's gonna make trading more difficult for cryptocurrencies. So keep that in mind, especially if you're trading. If this gets churny, cryptos are gonna be much harder to trade and your accounts can get churned up and lose more money in that time. So trade when the trends are clear. Right now the trend is clearly down and that's gonna make shorting so much easier than going long and basically buying those dips. So they're the key levels at the moment. 21,000, I'd much like to see 21,700 get closed back above again for the bulls. But for now, shorts are in play and then our next levels to, to those lows are pretty much at 19,000 all the way down to about $18,500. For ETH, We've got a beautiful looking chart here, especially on the way down. We've broken back under the 50% level. I'm at a shorter term time frame here just to have a look at what the whales, what the smart money is doing to the market. And this is basically going to be a little mini lesson, basically calling the news here as it happens in that real time and what has eventuated from the breakdowns. So 
you can see the volume here. This is the volume profile coming into the market. Basically, where are the buyers, where is that volume and the, the sellers uh, doing their trading? So this bar here on the 19th, you can see that is red, it's reversed. Uh, wick at the top, highest volume that the market had seen for several weeks at that point. That basically is stopping volume. Basically, the run is over. But you can see the market still churned around at these levels and it's giving a lot of new investors hope new traders and traders that are just trying to get into the market because they missed that run. We talked about this run on the channel, plenty of receipts back there if you wanna go and check all those videos out, looking at that move on the way up. So what happens to at this point, and this goes across the other cryptos, is that this is the buy the dip crew. Here we go, let's buy the dip. And so they did that, ran the market up just a tiny bit, another chance for the smart money to sell out. And you can see this with the candles that are patterns in the way of bearish patterns. So bearish engulfing right here. Green, red. Red encompassed the whole body. The sellers take control, smack the market back down. Increased volume compared to the last several bars. They're in control, but the bulls still think they have a chance. So they try and run the market back up again, back down. A Little bit of buying happens and we go on that last final run up into another pattern, another bearish pattern, a shooting star. You can see that wick there, increased volume. Then for me, these are the gotcha bars. This red bar right here, it basically takes out all of the buyers that had bought that last dip, thinking that this thing is gonna to go to $2,000 again. So unfortunately, it's the dumb money getting in at these levels, just trying to take that last trade. Or maybe some of the smart money trying to take that last trade, but hopefully have some stops in play. They wouldn't be smart money uh, for long if they didn't have stops in, in the market. So you can see this bar, gotcha, got the people stuck in the market. And now it's down, retest, down, another gotcha bar on the way down, and we've broken past 50%. So this is a clear downtrend, a nice, easy, short trading opportunity. Once we saw a, uh, a bearish signal, another bearish signal, the trend was getting weaker. Look at the volume profile here, just dying out. That means sellers are in control but the last of the bear, the bulls are just getting caught up in the market. And remember just a few days ago, that was all of the hype that we're going to $28,000 Bitcoin, maybe 30,000 and everyone's getting really excited, meaning it was probably the end of that run. Looking at cryptocurrencies now, this was total three we've been following for some time. I think there's two chances left here. This is what I think is coming next for cryptocurrencies. Two chances meaning we have been rejected at the 50% level. We're not surprised by that because we follow the 50% level. It's just clearly there in advance on the chart to give us uh, signals of when the market might get rejected. So 50%, $400 billion, you know, 393 round numbers here. It also came in at those previous highs in the market. You can see just panning out before the market broke down. Two chances left are these lows. So the first low is $340 billion and then 320 billion. So this is the all cryptocurrency market caps except Bitcoin and ETH. That's why we're taking a look at this because this is part of the crypto trading. Now onto the biggest one that did 230 odd percent to that peak. So 211% from that low to that high. This is Matic. So Matic is now on a clear downtrend, nice clean swings, lots of gotcha bars like we saw for Ethereum and uh, cryptocurrencies are gonna look very similar across the board. So Matic ran up, we specifically talked about this day, which is the 18th into the, uh, the 19th, where it just held up and didn't move. The 18th was a massive bar, one of the biggest bars it had seen in many, many, many weeks to the upside. What you need to see the following day is for the market to go even higher if the bulls are actually in control. And unfortunately, it didn't go any higher, it stalled and then broke down Again, the buy, buy the dip crew was right here thinking that we're gonna to go to a dollar fifty again or a dollar thirty. You saw a lot of those calls, you know, Matic, it's gone up so much, it needs to keep going. No, you can see the profit takers coming into the market and just sweeping the sweeping all of these new guys out. And so we got the buy the dip, the market then had a lower high, and the rest is history again. You know, we come down, look at this, volume profile again. The, the volume is just dying out, which isn't uncommon to see, especially with more of a triangle pattern at a peak, like a flag, but this was the clear signal that the show's over. I always talk about never trying to get the top or get the bottom. It's not that important to get the top or the bottom. It's actually not important at all. You just want to take a chunk of profits 
out of the middle. And this is exactly what has happened in this case. Uh, basically rejected at the previous floor and then bam, down she goes. Pretty much there's been no coming up for fresh air that entire way down. This is on the four hour chart and the yellow line is now taken out. That was 75 cents. Again, like we talked about, you guys have been following. Let me know in the comments uh, what you have achieved in the markets over the last couple of weeks, especially during this little pump up and now the market's reversing. Are you flipping short? Let me know in the comments how you have been going because this has been pretty good, especially when the trend is nice and clean in these moves. It's much more difficult to be trading when the trend is getting a little bit choppy like it was in May. You know, there's just not much going on here with very small ranges. So when it breaks out, nice and easy, you can get a move on. 75 cents is what we were looking at for the market to come back and test. It's now broken through, so I'm expecting somewhere around the mid 60s for this uh, for, for Matic to come back to and at least potentially test again or slice straight through. It's a you know if then but scenario, but if it doesn't hold, then it's gonna slice through. So at least you can keep the stops and you just keep trending down with the market, which is exactly what we're talking about in yesterday's video. So if you wanna learn a bit more about trading, definitely check out that video from yesterday. So that's what's happening with cryptocurrencies at this point in time. They are trending back. You've got the 50% level here at around 65 cents for Matic, maybe a little lower because you know it's gone on such a big run. That was one of the stronger cryptos. As for the weaker cryptos, they're having a tough time. Solana was, a bit of a mixed bag for me. It was in the middle. I looked at it as being slightly stronger because it was holding up and had a little bit more of a run. That's if I compared it to ADA, which has been the weakest of the bunch. It's basically lower lows, lower highs, rejected cleanly of 50%, just couldn't make it. And now it's coming back down to test these lows. So it really doesn't have too many chances left. And we break that point. I think ADA is basically on its way back down to that next target level. If it, can, if it does break through, good shorting opportunities provided it breaks through with volume and closes low. There's always a provided disclaimer with trading these sorts of shorts because you don't want to be caught out and the market just bounce against you and take your account, okay? So it needs to have some volume as it breaks down. That would tell me that it's time for the sellers to come back in and just start to smash this market back down to 30 or 20, uh, 20 cents in time. So eight of the weaker of the bunch, you can see that and Solana, Mixed bag, I had higher hopes for this, but again, it's been smacked down. Last chance, second last chance here is about 30 bucks, and then the last chance here is about $25. Matic, still strong. You can see how much higher it is. It did go on a bigger run. Matic was the stronger of the bunch. Needs to hold at those levels. And as for Bitcoin, damn, we don't want to see this thing break down past $19,000. That could just be another slow grind to those lower levels. So. All in all, there have been some opportunities for the short side. If you want to learn more, definitely go and check out yesterday's video. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this. Like, subscribe. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys in the comment section. And of course, there's links to Bybit and BitGet with those $4,000, $8,000 of sign-up bonuses. See you at the next one. Till then, peace out.